Hey, I'm Carb Brother, Chris Nelson, President of Carbo. Really excited to finally have some new stuff for the PMR30. We've got a completely updated all-in-one PMR30 bundle, and that's what we're covering today. We're gonna do the full installation. I really wanna demonstrate and compare a bone stock out of the box, never been fired, PMR30 against completely modified, even with some, some new stuff up and coming here. Everything we have to date, everything that's gonna be in the all-in-one, everything that will be also installed on this stock when we're done and we'll run it again and see how it performs. Let's run them, let's shoot these. I'm gonna shoot this one first. I'm just biased, I guess. I just wanna have a good run here in the beginning. Oh yeah. I love the PMR30 mag dump. I have yet to do a PMR30 mag dump and not smile. I mean, it's so hard to like not smile. I don't know what the deal is. All right, now let's run the bone stock one. I think I might be able to not smile. Let's see, I don't know. Maybe it'll run great, who knows. <laughs> what? This has got it, no. We'll give it one, all right? That's kind of. Another sweet, all right, I mean, eventually we'll get through a 30 round mag. Okay, not as gratifying. I think that's the big issue. Everybody's like, yeah, I wanna go to the range. 30 round mag, 22 magnum. Mag Dump City, show your buddies, people you're taking to the range with you. Maybe you're gonna show them how to shoot or at least show off your new 22 Magnum pistol with holds 30 rounds and then it's like nothing but clearing malfunctions. So let's shoot the Mcarbo modified PMR. Dude. Even the rate of fire, you can really run these. Like I'm trying to push it as fast as I can. And it always surprises me, you know, the faster and harder we push them, I'm fully expecting it to like start breaking down or having problems, but they're running. It's fun. We've got a brand new PMR. We're gonna install the complete bundle on. So this baby's bone stock, we're gonna see how she runs right out of the box. And this one here is all done up. It's got everything. It's even got something that we're testing, developing. We're actually running the first hundred right now. So if you guys think this sucks, you better tell me now, but if you like it, I really like it. I want to get this into some of you guys' hands now. So if anybody wants to volunteer, we could get that going. You got to give us some feedback though. You ain't got to share it with everybody. All right, let's see how these run. We'll compare them and we'll come back and pimp this baby out. All right, so let's run two more mags through the stock one, just to be fair, all right? Or whatever, maybe we run less, that's more fair. I don't know, let's see what happens. Yep, like first round every time doing a little double feed action. I know, it's silly. You're like, dude, I know. That's why I'm watching this video. I'm with you. Not bad, pretty good. I mean, it's brand new too, so you shouldn't get like a lot of malfunctions out of the box, which it's not bad, it's like three. Not too shabby, and that's bone stock. When you put enough rounds through them, like we've put a ton through here, it's held up remarkably well, but there's a lot less plastic on critical functioning components. So that definitely makes a difference. Notoriously, you put enough rounds through the stock pistols with a bunch of plastic inside, particularly plastic feed ramp and everything else, it does tend to kind of show pretty quickly but not too bad. All right, let's get on our tabletop. Let's put the all-in-one in there and we'll run it again. We got three malfunctions, so we can see how it does after, if we can get any more out of it. Parts needed for this build, the kel PMR30 all-in-one bundle. This bundle has grown quite a bit. We're gonna dig into it here, I'll lay it all out. You'll notice some things that look familiar from the earlier version. We've added a lot of new parts to this, which is exciting, and I can't wait to get it all out here. It's gonna be a lot, all right? Give me a little bit, I'm shuffling the deck here. All right, so here it is all laid out. This is your new all-in-one bundle for the Caltech PMR30. Really excited about this. 
So you'll notice right off the bat, there's four more additional items here, and you'll see some items that look familiar. So all together, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine part upgrades. Well, speed loader, we'll say eight part upgrades, whatever, semantics, forget it. All right, there's a lot of parts here and there's some tools. Let's go through it. So the new items, these four up here, the Keltec PMR30 aluminum frame support is gonna add some much needed rigidity to that plastic clamshell to keep it all solid together. We notice that there's flex between both sides of that clamshell. Just these little things that can throw off the accuracy and performance. I mean, it's necessary with what we're working with which is great. We've got at least some options to make it better. This is one that you guys wanted. We discovered how important this was when we were doing the redesign. Uh-oh, something else changed. Not only did we set out to create something that would not melt or wear like the rubber buffer, which here you go, all right? There's gonna be a lot of sidebars in this. I apologize ahead of time. These are just worn out buffers that we've replaced on customer guns. This affects the cycling operation. This affects the feeding operation. There's a certain amount of thickness from the factory on these original buffers. And we've noticed too that they've actually started increasing the thickness to compensate for it because they do wear quickly. That steady impact of the barrel block hitting these over and over again. I mean, this is what wears out first and starts to degrade the cycling and feeding operations. So there's a lot of good up close pictures on the website you can take a look at. You're gonna get a lot more detail each of these individual products on the website as well, usually I'll go through and give you every little aspect. Just check them out. So this is the peak performance buffer and the heavy duty takedown pin. So we have to have both of these together. They're not sold separately. They've got to go together for it to work as intended. We've got a stronger buffer, a little bit harder naturally, still does what it needs to do to buffer the steel components, but it's obviously going to require a little bit more rigid and stronger heavy duty takedown pin on the other end of the equation. You guys are well familiar with the new aluminum slide stop for the PMR30, which is awesome. Having more aluminum controls as opposed to the plastic ones, anything that you're gonna be manipulating to operate the firearm, it's nice to have something that's aluminum. Not only is it a nice touch point that you don't have to visually look at, but it's something with improved geometry design for better function, which leads me right into the extended safety selectors aluminum, love these. We put a lot of time into them to make sure that they improved and enhanced the performance and didn't degrade it. So that meant not just going crazy oversized because you could accidentally hit that safety as you're firing 22 mag, especially if you're up high, you know, on that back strap. So we wanted to make sure that it wouldn't accidentally engage, you know, every couple of rounds. So we had to get it just right. So those are the four new components to the all-in-one bundle. The extra power recoil spring you guys are familiar with, the speed loader, a must if you're gonna be jamming 30 rounds, and especially if you're doing mag dumps. So, and then we've got the enhanced magazine release, which also helps the feeding operations. It holds that magazine tighter up in the magazine well. We've also got the aluminum flat trigger with pre-travel, over-travel adjustment. It works for the PMR30, CMR30, and the CP33. And some of these items, you know, they're gonna work for the other platforms as well. They're so similar. Safety selector switch, it'll also work for the CP33 and the CMR30. The stainless steel feed ramp, psych, just kidding, coming back to it. And then obviously a couple tools that are required. Two two millimeter Allen keys, really handy when we're breaking apart the clamshell. Gonna be using those quite a bit. And then the universal armor spring tool. This is nice because it'll hold that spring as we're winding it around on the feed ramp. Here we are. I'm gonna clear this table off so I can dig in a little closer and show you what we did and why we did it. Here we are, just a magazine on the table here. We're gonna do a quick little explanation as to what's going on with a double stacked magazine. Because if you don't really pay close attention to it, you won't ever really notice it. It's one of these little subtleties. So as these bullets are feeding, right? And some of you guys already know this, but let's all kind of go back to step one here. So as this bullet's feeding, you know, it's coming off here on the right side, pretty obvious but sometimes the obvious is just hiding plain sight, right? And then the next round on the left side, I know, come on, just entertain me here. And then on the right side, you're, you're gonna see where I'm going with this here in a second, all right? Naturally, 
you know, it's alternating left and right. So naturally these bullets, you know, they're gonna be inclined to stay on one side or the other, right, left, right, left. All right, that's gonna be important here in a second. All right guys, so now we're gonna go up another level here. Just frames, you know, nothing else. Uh, I just wanna show you the bullets feeding. Here's the factory configuration. You know, we're familiar with that. Plastic feed ramp, it's wide open, right? You know, when you're looking at this, safety zone, safety zone. You know, they're coming off and there is room here for that round to move around. You know, it doesn't necessarily channel it. They're just gonna alternate back and forth. So it's coming up, it hits this right side first and then it keeps going until it hits the left side, kind of like a ping pong effect. And then it comes back center, you see that? And then we're gonna go do the next one. So it's gonna hit the left side and then it's gonna end up hitting the right side Look at that. And then it kind of pings back into the center, All right? That, you know, that's part of the problem right there. And we had to get into the weeds on this stuff. So that's what we got to do. That's what we get paid for. So we're always improving, even if it's our own stuff. So let me show you the new and improved feed ramp. Now we're pushing this round up and it channels it. See that? And it's holding it right in the center and it's going straight up. And that's the difference. So let's do it again. You know, coming up the left, still holding center, bingo. Coming up the right, still holding center. It's, it's subtle, it's not like a huge thing, but it definitely makes a difference and you're gonna see it. All right, all the ammo's off the table. I'm gonna put these away. You know, safety is serious. I'm not joking around there. Uh, I've seen guys with a ton of experience, you know, and they get complacent and they make a mistake and, and you gotta wear that one forever. You don't wanna be that guy. And hopefully they just shoot themselves, not somebody else. So this gives you a pretty good view here of the progression. You can see factory Keltec here on the left. And then you can see the initial feed ramp we did, which worked great. It did help alternating, channeling, into the center, still had a little tendency to kind of hit that side and then bounce back in. What we ended up going to, which makes way more sense and really excited about, you just saw it feeding, is this style of feed ramp. If you've got double stacked mag type firearms, you're gonna start noticing this little type of feature where they've got this nice little circular half circle recess on both sides and there's a little partition in the middle which helps channel it. And, and I love this feed ramp, more expensive to make meaning more time on the machines. So we also put some features back in to ensure that it's locating as best as possible. The older style worked and it's still working just fine in a lot of pistols. So I'm not trying to talk you out of the older style. It's certainly an improvement over the plastic one with the nub in the middle. Some of the newer production PMRs, for whatever reason, could be tolerances, could be whatever. Some of them did struggle with this one. So we ended up going to work and doing this. I know dudes are watching this like, I got the old one, man. I mean, you know, anybody that's getting this one's gonna pay for it. Don't worry about it. So you got a cheaper deal here. So when you look at some of the other firearms you're likely very familiar with, here's an AR-15. Here's the barrel, which, you know, star chamber here. This is the feed ramp and it, it's a double stack mag and it's got that alternating left, right feeding pattern. They also incorporated that obviously a long time ago into the design. Yeah, there's a little, this is, this is all I had. This is cool. You know, I'm uh, definitely a George Kellgren fan. Uh, you guys probably know about this, but this is the, the Grendel P30. And this is the predecessor to, you know, what we have now, the PMR30, which is pretty neat. I always like a little bit of history there. And he designed this, you know, first back in the day. And you can see that feed ramp in there. There's no slide lock on this baby. So let me get a little creative for you. Where's the hand critics at, man? I just read a comment today that said your hands are disgusting. I'm like, thank you, bro. Thank you. Now let me give you a back rub. So here's the feed ramp on the Grendel and machined right in there. You know, you've got these little profiles for the alternating feeding operation. And it's same double stack mag, 22 mag. I mean, this is PMR30 before we ever had a PMR30. So it's pretty cool. Same profile. You get it. I beat the deck. Excited about the new feed ramp.
Tools needed for this build, bench block, hammer, 1 8 inch punch, 3 32 inch punch, 1 16 inch punch, gunsmith shank, which is just a little micro tip flathead screwdriver with a little notch cut into it. It does a lot of the same stuff that this universal spring installation tool will do for you that comes in the bundle, so not completely necessary. If you got a micro tip, that's good. And a regular flat tip screwdriver, 2.5 millimeter Allen key or T-handle wrench like we got here. It just makes it a little faster. Blue 242 Loctite, it's a removable kind. Like I said, the Universal Armor Spring Tool Installation Tool. It's an assist. It's a great way to grab something in a tight, tiny little spot and move it around. You'll see when we put the feed ramp in. And two two millimeter Allen keys. This is gonna be essential when it comes to putting the magazine release in. Taking it off, putting it in, must have. And as always guys, make sure we're an iPro. Here's a little caveat to the tool list. If you do have a fat wrench, which is basically like a, a screwdriver torque wrench, you know, we're gonna be tightening up these little button head two millimeter screws. It's three per side. So these two and this one, you know, on both sides, we're gonna be tightening those up to four inch pounds hardly anything like super hand tight. I'm gonna admit it, I over tighten stuff naturally. So this is gonna be a big help for me. If you don't have one, usually about 50 bucks, you'll use it a lot. And we've got the two millimeter bits and the two and a half millimeter bits were covered on the hex keys that we need to take this apart. Now I've got a little snap cap here. It's a dummy round. You know, if you've got any rim fire, that's really where it matters. The whole like don't dry fire. The rim fire is essential to try to protect the firing pin because that firing pin is gonna impact the steel chamber. So you're gonna have steel on steel contact. You know, the way the rim fire works, I know most of you guys know this, but I'm gonna throw it in. That firing pin is gonna hit the rim you know, of the cartridge here. So if there is no round in that chamber, it's gonna be steel on steel and it's just gonna eventually wear that firing pin out and then leave the light strikes, which on rim fires, you know, that can always be a battle. Something else I wanted to mention, you know, we've got these Caltech PMR30 operator notes. I threw this together. This is like a quick troubleshooting guide. You know, if you got, just got a PMR30 and you're trying to figure out like, you know, I went through the owner's manual and picked out critical things that you've got to follow, like even the ammo type. It clearly specifies the type of ammo you need to shoot. Very helpful. This is on the website. You just scroll towards the bottom. And, you know, this is something I like to point out too. I even quiz the guys around here and everybody screws it up. It's easy to do. So when you look at this exploded view here, and this is on the site too, these screws we're talking about, when you look at the exploded view, you can see it. 185 called out, 185 called out. There's the safety selectors, right? So it's clearly identifying you know, which screws are going to the safety selector. And then over here, this is a receiver screw, right? There's a receiver and that's the left side. So it takes the same size, the two millimeter screws that are gonna be taken out, putting back in, same. So these three are the same. There's one that's different. It's on the right side, 190 called out right there. And when you look down here, it says, you know, 185 is a slide cover screw. 190, it's a receiver screw. Why does that matter? When we get this baby out, you're gonna see the trigger bar is on this side, on the right side, and it's going all the way back. It's even, when we put it back together, we're gonna be pushing the trigger bar under the safety. There's an extended portion here, right? And that's what allows the safety to function. So it's blocking that trigger bar function. If we have a screw that's too long on the right side, you're gonna have that dead trigger effect. You're gonna be wondering what's going on. You'll be like, M Carbo, those sons of, you know, you get it. So I'm just trying to set you guys up for success. That's one I've seen over and over again. I take them apart here and I'm like, yep, long screw on this side. Why is a long screw on this side? I feel like an old man, like, close the door, AC's getting out. So make sure, all right, it's gonna be the shortest of the four on the right side. All right, so as always, let's take this opportunity together. We'll check our firearms, make sure they're clear. So check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine well. All three positions are clear, this firearm's clear. All right, now we can start with a field strip. We're just gonna push the takedown pin out. So you can see on the left-hand side, you got the bigger head, you know, smaller over here, you're gonna push right through. You use a punch, you know, we're replacing this part. So it's, you scratch it up if you want, but keep these parts. It's good to have spares. So we're gonna have plenty of bags here in a minute. One thing I like to point out, it's a little difficult to see, and I'm gonna demonstrate it here again in a second. You can see my punch in there. Well, that recoil spring and guide rod, they're protruding through this hole, and that's where it's captured and retained on the factory pin. And you'll notice on this factory pin, this cut is all the way around, you know, the entire outer diameter there. So it's thinner in the middle. So with the peak performance buffer, it's not gonna melt. 
it's not going to deform, but it's harder. So with this, you know, lower grade steel, not heat treated to the specs that we're running it to, and thinner in the middle, these will bend. So that's why the peak buffer has to go with the heavy duty takedown pin. You change one thing, you certainly sometimes have to change another. So I'm gonna kinda explain at least all this as we go. All right, just push the slide forward, and there we go. We're, first little step is done. All right, and here we go. I'm gonna show you really quick. You can see a little bit better now. You can see that recoil spring and guide rod sticking through that hole a little bit. And when I run this little pin in there, you're gonna hear it slash see it capture. There you go, all right. All right, so let's focus on the slide first. We're gonna remove the recoil spring and guide rod and the factory rubber buffer. Take your little gunsmith shank micro tip and we're gonna pull back on that recoil spring guide rod back here on the barrel block and separate them. Just kind of let it up like that. There's your recoil spring guide rod assembly. This portion here, the captured portion, is what's going through the barrel block and what's capturing that takedown pin. Now this side over here, this is what we're gonna be, you know, and it works perfect on the bench block. It's gonna hold it in place. So we're gonna be pushing down on this side and there's a little tiny retainer here that we're gonna be replacing. We'll get in that here in two seconds. Let's take a look at this buffer. So this is brand new, brand new pistol. Shot three mags through it, so 90 rounds, and it's already showing some impact wear. It's flattening, so it's starting to lose its thickness, which is a crucial part of the whole cycling function with the PMR30 in particular. And this is something we discovered after fixing a ton of these pistols and really going into the weeds on how to get them all to run flawlessly, which I'm happy to say we did. Uh, ultimately, we came together as a team, we made it happen. So really thankful that is all behind us and really excited to be sharing this with you guys. So we're gonna be replacing that buffer. You do not want that buffer. But I mean, you could always just keep sending it back and they'll put another one in there. It'll just melt and deform after three mags and then back to the same situation. But if you have a UPS account, you'll be all set. All right, so go ahead and grab your peak performance buffer and the heavy duty takedown pin. Open these up, swapping everything now while we're thinking about it. Save a few of these bags, put your spare parts in them. Peak performance buffer, I'm telling you, CNC machined. It doesn't get any better than this. This is the best thermoplastic material that you can get. Doesn't melt, retains its shape and form. Even after all the beatings it's gonna continuously take at extreme temperatures, it'll take it all the way up to the 480 degrees Fahrenheit, which is plenty, and it does what it's supposed to do. It is a little harder. It's preventing that steel on steel contact, and it's doing its job as a buffer. On the other side of that contact is the takedown pin, and this is what's holding that barrel block in place. So you'll see it here, it'll kind of click in a minute. You know, we've got our buffer, it's gonna go in like this, these little raised little tabs here, they're gonna go in like facing the barrel block, all right, and there's a smooth side on the back with a little undercut for clearance. So it's going in, those little raised tabs going in to take that little beating from the barrel block, and with this peak performance buffer, you wanna make sure you get it fully seated. Press it in there. You know, it's gonna be a snug, nice, tight fit. It's not gonna just flop around. I mean, it's gonna precision. It's gonna hold in there. It's not gonna be like what you just saw when you pulled this apart, where it was flopping and falling all over the place. The heavy duty takedown pin, you've got this little pocket right here. You know, this little circular cut, that divot. The rest of it's a solid pin. You know, so this is extra strength, rigidity, You'll notice the orientation that pocket has to this little slot cut. So that's gonna give you an idea when it's locked or not. So you can see they're right in line with one another. It's not hard to take out. It's gonna stay locked in position. You know, it mates with the recoil spring and guide rod right here. So that little raised dimple there, they mate just like that. And it locates against it under tension. So you're gonna put your recoil spring and guide rod back into bench block. We're going to compress it like this so we can take that little retainer off and then we can swap out the springs. All right, so we're going to use two sets of pliers. That's the only caveat here. You know, we need to use pliers. I didn't mention that in the tools list, but everybody should have some pliers. We're going to push down with one and I'll show you what we're going to do with the other. So, you know, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to use my left hand to hold it down. And then my right hand is going to, we're basically going to pinch this retainer, deform it so we can pop it off. So this, this might take a little, 
little bit of patience. I mean, it's nothing crazy. It's a little tiny piece of music wire, really. I mean, it's like a spring, you know, music wire, spring wire. That's all it is, which it works. I mean, it, it does the job, but if you don't have a replacement, it can be difficult because it's gonna be deformed, kind of jacked up. So in the extra power recoil spring kit, you've got a replacement, so you don't have to worry about that. So the technique here is to, you know, you got a split right there. So press evenly on that split. All right, and then it's gonna bow out. Cause if you just clamp down on one side, you know, you're gonna tighten it up into that notch. So I just got a good bite on it, press down evenly on that cut, that split. You can see that. And it's kind of like a, an oval now. So I've got enough clearance to take my little gunsmith shank and just pop that baby out. You could use a pick too. I mean, whatever you got, you know, this is, this is just kind of a general guide, the tools list and everything else. And you can see it's not like a little quick little flip. I'm literally like pulling it off. Yeah, you're gonna destroy this thing. There you go. All right, there it is. Now do not move this hand. It's under a lot of tension. So yes, we got a retainer. Let's focus on this though. Slowly release, you know, you're not just gonna let go of your pliers. You're gonna kind of like walk it up off that guide rod. So you've got your inner and outer recoil spring. We're replacing these, let's set it down. Now we can look at that little piece of wire that we've called a bunch of bad names. <laughs> and that's something I know we're, we're showing a lot more of, you know, it's, it takes a little bit. It's not like a quick little pop and go, but that's fine. It's not impossible. It's a little tiny piece of wire. And then we've got this little retainer here. I mean, this works. Is this the most expensive setup? No, not at all. If this is something you guys want, we're literally machining a stainless steel guide rod right now because we've had some requests from you guys to have something better. And, and honestly, I, I think the request was mainly so that we could put it together for you with the extra power recoil spring and just ship them out pre-assembled, which makes sense to me. I mean, I totally get it. You know, somebody that's putting hundreds of these together a day, they're gonna be great at it. But uh, yeah, this will make for a more pleasant Saturday. And even the retention method could definitely be improved. But if that's something you guys don't care about, this is gonna be cheaper all day long. We're definitely working hard to finish up the PMR 30. Like I said, we're going for a full M series. So nothing's off the table right now. So this is the replacement retainer right there. And these are the extra power recoil springs, inner and outer, easy to tell apart. So the M carbo springs are shiny and the factory springs kind of like a dull black. It's a simple process. We put the little spring inside the big spring, right? Just like that. Slide it onto the guide rod, drop it into the bench block, which if you're doing this, this is well worth, you know, what you gotta pay to get this thing. And it works good and we've redesigned it. It's actually way better than it's ever been. Now we're gonna do the same thing. Let's go ahead and grab this little tiny retainer out of the bag, out of this tiny bag. There is the retainer. So let's just get it to where we can grab it in a hurry right there. All right, so we got both springs on that guide rod. We're pushing down evenly, hold it tight. You know, this is where the tension is. This is where it can go crazy on you. Get your pliers on there, a good solid grip. You want to make sure you've got that baby held on tight and you want to make sure that you've pushed it down far enough. So that can be the other thing. You want to leave enough room. This is what I've got, you know, at least a quarter inch. You can get more than that, but you have to have enough to get your retainer on in that little piece of wire. So I'm holding it solid grip and we're going to put that retainer on. That's where you're looking. It's that flat, smooth side is going down. And this little, you know, recessed side, it's kind of got a collar right there. That's going in the slide. And that's what's going to keep it all centered. So the flat end going down, right? Bingo. If you got some grease or sweaty hands, thank God, pick it up. And then pop that little baby over that little notch on the guide rod. And then we're gonna clamp it down. So we're gonna do the opposite of what I told you earlier. You know, I was saying even pressure earlier. Now you wanna clamp that baby down. So find the split and then, you know, you're not pushing on the split, you're pushing on a solid portion because we want it to, you know, wrap under itself more or less, get nice and tight on that guide rod. So you're just bending it, kind of working your way around. It's kind of, Kind of lapping over itself there, you know, the it's getting tighter. My 
freaking OCD is killing me here, man. It's not gonna be perfect, all right? All of us dudes, the OCD trying to make it wrap tight right into that recess. It's not gonna happen. Slowly let it up and we're just gonna check and make sure we've got the retention necessary and pull it out of that little bench block and we're gonna you know, push it up and down. We're gonna make sure that it's all centered. So you should see that piece of wire in there and it shouldn't be canting anything. It should allow it to at least move freely without it getting pushed out off of the guide rod. That's the last thing we want. So the X-Power recoil spring is on there. All right, let me know about the guide rod. Let's get this baby into the barrel block on the slide. This end that we were just working on with the little piece of wire retainer, push your barrel back. That end I'm talking about, it's going up front into the slide and it's gonna capture right there in between the buffer and that little tiny neck down portion is going through that hole in the slide. And that's what keeps it all centered. So you got it in there. Now we're gonna push it. You should be able to push it by hand. You can use a tool if you need to, but it should just be able to pop it right in like that. And then just make sure it's fully in there, seated. And then check up here and make sure it's you know aligned and captured. It's good. And you can even you know push on that barrel block. Yeah, everything's looking good, functioning well. Now the takedown pin's gonna go through there and it's gonna lock it into the frame and that barrel block's gonna be stationary. So here's the heavy duty takedown pin. That will be going in the barrel block, like what we were just kind of rehearsing and talking about. And definitely can feel it, especially with the extra power recoil spring in there. So good, nice retention and lockup. And I'm just turning it by hand right now, but I didn't feel it clip. Now when we have, you could hear it. You feel it and see it. We have the frame, you know, obviously there's gonna be, you push it, you turn it. That's nice. That's good solid retention. But this makes a little more sense now. You know, so it's bolting the barrel block to the frame. So that slide is functioning. You know, it's slide is moving and this is where they're hitting. So you can see there's gonna be stress on that heavy duty takedown pin, or if you had the factory pin, a lot of stress, would be bending. The impact is taking place here. Here, here, you know, it's absorbing all that shock as it's intended to do. And now I'm just gonna rotate it to unlock it and push it out. I'm gonna put all this aside. We're done with the slide right now. Now we can focus on taking apart the frame. We're gonna work on the right-hand side. All right, guys, so this is everything we're putting in on the frame installation portion of this build. I took it out of the packaging. It's easier to see and we can quickly review some of the benefits, sort of, kind of. I mean, it's got some in the bags here. Left and right, you can't get them mixed up. So these are the enhanced safety selectors. You know, these are extended. They're aluminum, 6061 aircraft grade aluminum. Love these. Got the nice serrations there on the underside and the top. We put a lot of time and good intricate detail into this, and I, I'm really impressed with it, and I can't wait to hear what you guys think of them. We released a lot of this stuff all at once. So, yeah, you got it labeled, but you'll see here in a second. There's no way to get them mixed up. All right, and we're very familiar with the aluminum 6061 aircraft grade black hard coat slide stop. So this little baby just pops right off. And, I mean, look, we can get a little head start. You're going to take this thing off, and there you go. It just comes right off, a little piece of plastic, just like that. And it's not retained, then you're left with a nub. These things will blow off while you're shooting. The back pressure, 22 Magnum, it'll definitely do it. So the upgrade aluminum slide stop, it's got those two set screw holes there. And these are little cone point set screws, so they have a little pointed tip. And there's a little oil in there, so getting a glare. But you'll notice there's a couple notches on either side, and those points just locate right in there. It locks it in place. It's awesome. And then the new and improved stainless steel feed ramp. There's no way in heck this thing's ever going to be a problem. It's going to be total enhancement. Flat trigger, there again, 661 aircraft grade aluminum, hard coat anodized. You got the pre-travel, over-travel. You got the little Allen key that you're going to need to make the adjustments. The enhanced magazine release, this thing is awesome. I'll go over it again here in detail, but it'll recess a little bit, got some extra grip, and it's gonna ensure that the magazine fits nice and snug. And this is the aluminum, bare aluminum frame support. Aluminum doesn't rust, and not everybody knows that, so you're good there. Bare aluminum, you're not gonna see it shiny. A little bling for you on the inside. I mean, it adds that rigidity. It's gonna help locate right there in the center of the frame, so it gives you some nice support because it splits right down the middle. That does not lead to improved accuracy or performance. So we wanted to do anything we could to improve our situation here. Really excited about it. Let's 
get into it. I'm gonna cover a couple details that I don't wanna miss. I wanna make sure you know about them. So first and foremost, before anybody goes any further, let's go ahead and release this hammer forward. Don't just pull the trigger. Let's slowly ease it forward. We don't wanna slam it here on the actual housing, receiver housing. So we wanna make sure we do everything we can to you know, not damage anything. So we'll just pull the trigger and let it go forward. You're gonna have to put some good tension on it because it's under some tension. That's a must. So if you don't wanna listen to me, keep going. You know what to do, I mean, you're taking screws out. And most of you guys already done this. So, you know, study the linkage inside. Get you a good visual, it's always helpful. Remember I was talking about in the beginning how that trigger bar is going under the safety back here and how you gotta use the short screw on the right side. Easy way to remember is by looking where that trigger bar is and you'll notice a little better when we get it split in half. But this is your time to memorize everything and hopefully this video will be a good resource for that. You can always hit, you know, rewind and see where it was all at. You know, we're doing similar things. We're gonna get that spring on the feed ramp to locate into the slide stop. Remember, we just removed that, this little baby, it, it flew off, remember? <laughs> and we just removed the slide stop just as a quick demo, comes off real easy. Pop it off with a little screwdriver if necessary. That spring on the feed ramp provides the tension for the slide stop, allow it to go up and down. So as long as that hammer's forward, we're good to go there. We're not going into the receiver housing, so you don't have to worry about that. It's mainly, where's the feed ramp? Where's the trigger return spring? Over here. You know, where is that little spring going? Into the slide stop, so it has tension. The only other thing to really take notice of is this magazine release spring. You just want to replicate the orientation. So you can see how this leg is coming up over the pin on this side of the pistol. We got it upside down, so it's on the left side of the pistol here, you know, it's going up and it's locating underneath of that mag release. So it's locating under the mag release. So the other leg is pressing against the frame down there. So you got a leg coming over the top, which is on, you know, the left-hand side of the pistol as you're looking at it. The other leg is going under and it's pressing against the frame. Those are the most important details. The other details are, you know, you put it all back together, you're like me, and you tighten the crap at everything, and you get a dead trigger, you're gonna wanna do a little quick troubleshooting. So you're gonna wanna loosen this screw here in the center, cause that's part of it. Just so you understand the concept, it's due to the trigger bar binding. So that's why, cause your trigger bar should move like this. So if it's too tight, it's not gonna move very freely. Or if you got the wrong screw back here, that's also gonna be a problem. That trigger bar will be hitting that screw. This is the longer socket head cap screw of the six. So there'll be five shorties and one long one. So these will be your five shorties right here, one long. So you'll adjust this, loosen it up incrementally. That doesn't do it and you got it really loose. Then go back here. It's gonna be this receiver screw. Loosen that up. And then you can try loosening up this safety selector switch screw. Mainly it's just, we wanna have nice freedom of movement on that trigger bar. And last but not least, you know, we've got the blue 242 Loctite. You gotta have it. I mean, for this application, especially, you know, we're gonna need the Loctite for the safety selector screws on both sides and same with the receiver screws on both sides. You don't necessarily need to do it down here. You can, I mean, it's, it's hard to get off by itself anyway. You know, we're gonna have to do that counter pressure, but definitely these four up here. And when we put in the flat trigger, we're gonna need to obviously put some Loctite on that pre-travel adjustment and the over-travel adjustment back here. We just don't want them, you know, walking out as we're shooting. And these tiny little cone point set screws that are going in to the slide stop, the aluminum slide stop, you're gonna wanna make sure you got some Loctite on there because they're, look at that. I mean, you'll see when you get it. Make sure you got a clean workspace. And that's really it. So I wanna hit that in case I forget. And I know you guys will remind me in the comments, so I'm gonna do my best, all right? Here we go. And this is the other thing I wanted to demo. You know, we got the factory mag release in there. This is a magazine with no ammunition. Highly recommend doing that if you wanna check it. All right, and you can see there is a ton of play, but it really kind of drives the point home right here. Look at the magazine and where the feed ramp is. And so that kind of upward, downward movement, you know, especially while you're shooting, you just don't want that. You don't need that. That's not gonna promote any sort of efficient cycling operations without failures. So we wanna make sure we've got every advantage possible to get, you know, 100% mag dumps. Or good controlled firing. I hear you, I hear you. It's not just about the mag dumps, but I'll tell you, it's fun. So we're gonna start by, 
removing everything. Don't let this little guy intimidate you. If you don't have one of these and you don't want to spend the 50 bucks, I don't blame you. This is what we do for a living, so we got these things. So on these tiny two millimeter screws back here, you know, the receiver screw, select your switch screw, this little tiny screw down here for the actual mag release, all six of them, you know, you're gonna do four inch pounds. So you can see, you know, that you got the 10, the 20, 30, 40, all the way up inch pounds. So, you know, you dial it, dial it down until you get to that four. You don't have this, you're just gonna slowly, you know, tighten them up, just snug. You're just trying to just get them threaded all the way in. You know, a little tiny strong hand turn, and that'll be fine. And then the two and a half millimeter socket head cap screws, these six up here, right, holding the frame together, these are gonna be anywhere between six and eight inch pounds. You know, this is only when I'm putting it back together. If I even remember to do it, I'll probably be so excited I can see the finish line. I'll be like, just tighten them up. And that'll be a good chance for you guys to see the troubleshooting. <laughs> but we do have another video, the original one. I went through it, man, painfully. I just watched that video before I did this and I was like, dang. So let's get into it. All right, we're gonna start taking these screws out. I'm gonna stop jibber jabbering. Make sure your hammer is forward. Doesn't really matter where you start. I'm gonna start in the center, the big one. I'm gonna get all these out and I'm gonna start taking these out. This is gonna be your longest one right here. And you don't need Loctite on these because you got lock nuts on the opposite side. Just keep going. So you wanna make sure you got six. Now let's go ahead and take this mag release out. This is one that's always good to see in action. That's why we got this little bag of two millimeter Allen keys included. If you only got one set of Allen keys, we, yeah, it's just, we don't do that to you. You know, get a set in each side and then you're just doing that counter force, all right? And it helps to kind of crack them loose. And you definitely got to hold one as you're turning the other. I'm turning this side and this one's backing out, but that's going to happen. Also a good giveaway too. So I misspoke there earlier, you know, there's Loctite on it. So we'll do that. So all the two millimeters, get them with Loctite. Remember the size, so we can even look at our handy little, you know, sheet here and see if those screws are exactly the same as the other screws. So this handy sheet, the exploded view, there it is. So these are the exact same screws, the 185s, right there where the mag release is. We're gonna hold off, we're gonna leave that in there because that's gonna help keep it all together because we wanna see it, hopefully, we'll see what happens. So we don't have to worry about getting those screws mixed up. They're the same screws, that's, that's really nice. We don't have to worry about it, so we're on our way. Two millimeter Allen key, got it right here. Take the safety selectors off. And there's Loctite, giveaway. There's a little plastic safety selector. If, if you just pulled it out of the box and you're already tearing parts out of it, at least you know try to use that safety with one hand, pretty difficult and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's all these little things, you know, and it definitely adds up and it improves performance and efficiency and everything else, especially for the shooter operator as they're trying to manipulate the controls. This is difficult. All right, another little plastic safety lever. All right, now the receiver screws. Here's a little quiz. You're on the right side. Is this a short one or a long one? Trigger bars on this side. So do you want to have a long one there or do you want to have a short one there? And that's the way I remember this stuff. Once you understand these concepts, it's a no brainer. And now you can see the trigger bar. You see it right under that safety? So that's exactly why we don't want a long screw there because as you're pulling on that trigger, you can see that trigger bar moving back and forth. So I like to understand that stuff too because when you see all those screws, it's like, wow, they're the same screws except this one. I wonder why they did that. Maybe I'll just leave it that way. <laughs> So this little guy, we're gonna leave separate, all right? We're not just gonna throw it in the bowl over there. A Little bit shorter. So if I grab one of the 185s, you can definitely see the difference. That's another 185. There we go. So we got all the screws out of here. Doing the last little double check. Left that pin in, that's good. Keep it all there. Now you're gonna wanna make sure you got the lock nuts still. You can push them back in, otherwise they'll just kinda of fall out. And they may fall out anyway. They do have that little hex pattern for them to kinda of stay seated in there. But you can definitely see that baby flexing on the table. You start pushing on it, you, then you start really pushing on it. 
don't do that. I'll just leave it alone for now. It's not necessary. Now this is cool. So if you do this real slow and methodical, take your time, and then you're looking at everything as you're doing it, that's the best practice. We're gonna slowly, methodically, kind of peel it back, slowly separating it. You can take your regular flathead. You know, if you use that real fine micro tip, you might start putting little notches in there, but it's not gonna hurt anything. All right, see that? So that's what we want. I'm just kind of working it around. So far, so good. Now I'm just holding it over here on the trigger bar and I'm just literally kind of peeling it all back. And then we're gonna end down here on the actual magazine release. And I'm gonna take three 30 seconds inch punch and I'm gonna push it into that grip pin. And I'm gonna push it through. And I'm also gonna look and I'm kind of study it too while I'm doing this because I'm gonna make sure I get that, I wanna get it right. You know, I don't wanna get it in there wrong and then have to do it again. Bingo, all right, not too shabby. So the trigger bar and trigger, still intact. The only thing, you know, that we don't have to mess with is the receiver. We can leave all that there. You don't need to pull that apart. You know, if your hammer spring pops off, grab your little needle nose pliers, and you know, you're gonna pull it down just on that straight leg and get it to hook under that pin. All right, let's go ahead and put the other magazine release on there. So the idea, you know, with that magazine release, with that kit, this is the enhanced magazine release. You got this little assembly tool. You can try to use that now, or you can just use your 3 32nd inch punch. Let's do that. Let it sit in there. And then we're gonna slide it right up. It'll kind of stay retained, and you can get a good look at it. We're gonna drop it in just like this. So I'm gonna pull it out, I'll make sure this leg is on this you know, right side as we're looking at it, and the other leg's touching the back. And you pinch it just like that, quick handover. All right, use your punch because you can kind of step it up. It'll be easier than trying to get this in right away because this is a little more true to size. Undersized, you're able to step it up until you get to the appropriate size like we're gonna do right here. You kind of hold it like this, you see the orientation, and I can kind of move that spring a little bit you know, since it's undersized. Now I'm gonna literally, I'm gonna push in this little assembly tool. The idea is to push down the table one smooth, clean motion. You do it on the table and I'll do it. I'll do it the hard way, I like suffering. I want you to be able to see it. I'm just doing this for sweet camera angles. That's what happens when you're a movie star, man. <laughs> just kidding. But I'm glad you guys appreciate the videos. I mean, I love to suffer on camera, I'm telling you. There we go, bingo. So same orientation, looking good. We're gonna drop it right onto this pin that's sitting there, it's waiting for it. You can push on that leg of the spring that's sticking way out, kind of relieve some of the tension so it's not quite as difficult. And then one kind of smooth, clean motion, and you want to get that baby through. So keep, keep going. All right, perfect. And that's where we want it. So that leg should be sticking out on that right side. The other leg pushing up against the actual mag release, you know, on that inside little bar that goes across. Now we're gonna work our way up. We got a lot of stuff we can do here. I'm jumping right into this frame support. I love this thing. You know, I think this is gonna be one of those simple little upgrades that you guys are like, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I kinda like that, which I'm hoping that's the case. You know, these are for the mold. So this is for the injection molding operation. What happens is if they made this solid plastic, you'd get sink, which it just, it's gonna look like a little um, divot almost. It won't be smooth across because it's so thick. And during that heating process, you're gonna have that sink. It's gonna be like a little puddle almost. It'd look weird, but it never turns out looking good. It's gonna fit right in. You know, some might be tighter, more snug than others. So you got it nice and tight, that's good. You know, some might just be kinda of, sorta tight. There's tolerances, we gotta make sure they at least fit and it's gonna do what it's intended to do. It's gonna hold it together, put a little anchor point between these two, these flimsy little pieces of plastic, which you do this, you're like, damn, really? Like, how does this even work? We beef it up like this, pretty damn reliable, you know, which is impressive. All right, so now, you just saw that. See, that's what I was worried about. I was gonna get rambling. I mean, literally, you just take it off, pops off. I'm gonna show you how to put it on. So this is the slide stop bar. This little circular piece is going right on that little circular nub right there, which is where the trigger is gonna locate. Push it down, because it kind of looks like it's down right now, but it's not. You wanna make sure you got the rest of that bar lined up where it's supposed to be. 
You notice that little hole on the slide stop bar? Well, that's where the spring is going that's located on the back of the feed ram. Now you can polish this up. I was actually gonna grab a polishing kit for the video to show you and the Dremel and everything else. I think you guys have seen a bunch of the polishing videos. Just look on uh, the YouTube channel or just look around the website, you're gonna see a bunch of videos of polishing. You'll see the polishing kit, there's probably a video there. And I guarantee I'll be in the video and I'll be like, man, I love polishing. You've got the spring sitting there like this. I don't ever expect this to happen, but you know, take a look at it, all right? You should have a screw holding that spring in place. That's how you should receive it from us. Take your little gunsmith shank. All right, this is where the little baby shines. I love this little gunsmith shank. We've been using these for a long time and we actually just started selling them on the website. I think it's a little bit easier because I can see a little bit more when I'm using this. This one comes in the kit. You know, this one doesn't at the moment in this video. So you're just gonna grab that little leg right there and you're gonna get it in that little hole on the bar. All right, I'm kind of pulling the feed ramp off so I can get you know, a little standoff and I can kind of see, line it up the hole. And then once I get that leg of the spring into that bar, I can then seat the feed ramp in there, just like that. And it's much easier than just putting the feed ramp in and then trying to jam the spring in. All right, now that we're in there, let's focus on the feed ramp, because that ain't right right now. You can see these little lugs on the side. These are new. The more detail you put in a part, the more expensive it's gonna be. Always is. Doesn't get any cheaper. It's like uh, asking for, you know, for a bunch of stuff and then hoping you get a discount on top of it. It just never works that way. The machine time just keeps going up and up and up. You know, the meter keeps running. All right, man, that's awesome though. That is definitely worth it. I do like this. Obviously make sure this lug here locates. We compress it all together. We're gonna make sure there's no gaps when it's all clamped together, the clamshell. Now we need to get the trigger installed. So let's do a little switcheroo here. So I got the right side clamshell. I still got the trigger and trigger bar on there. So that's handy. Good little reference I can look at. Don't forget any of the Loctite that we got to do along the way. So this is the first item we got to start applying some Loctite to. We've also got to get a general starting point for these screws in the actual trigger. So we've got set screws in the back and the front, a set screw in the back and a set screw in the front, over travel, pre-travel. You've got an Allen key that came with the trigger. We want to get some Loctite on these threads. So you can just back it out a little bit. I mean, I wouldn't bother pulling it all the way out because then you got to try to get it started. Don't cross thread it, this and that. They're already kind of pre-started for you. You don't need to do any extra work. You got a lot left. I'm going to take this PMR when I'm done. This is going to be mine. We got to hide them from each other around here because otherwise it'll be in pieces tomorrow. There we go. It's been a minute since I used that one. So I got a good amount of Loctite on there and I'm just going to tighten it up so I can get the Loctite inside on those threads, and then I'm gonna back it out. And I ain't tightening it up all the way, I'm just trying to get a little Loctite in there. All right, so I still got some sticking out. I'm gonna wipe off the excess, we can count the threads. So I got three sticking out. So we can at least get it to four. I know in the last video I had it out to five and then I had to tighten it up a hair, so I'm doing like four and a half right now. We're just gambling right here, trying to Hope we nail it just right. If we don't, you just have to, I'll show you. <laughs> it's not that bad. Now on the front here, on the pre-travel, you know, we're just gonna do two. And there's not a lot on the pre-travel. The over-travel is a little bit more forgiving back here, but the pre-travel is not. You have to have pre-travel for that trigger to reset. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. There's gotta be a certain amount. Typically, there's always a little um, margin of safety there, or you just, there's always a little extra. Same deal, just trying to get some Loctite in there. Get the excess off. Let's count these threads. Yeah, two. So I got two, barely. I'm living dangerously. Bring it out a little bit. There's a full two right there. Now, let's do the switch. Pretty simple and straightforward. We can pull this baby right off. All right, just kind of wiggle it a little bit. It'll come off as one solid unit, sort of, kind of. That little leg right there with the bend, that's what's gonna locate on the trigger bar. And then this straight leg, it locates like that on that little tiny ledge. See that on the trigger? We got the same thing on this one. So the pin goes in the top, right on that ledge. So 
we're going to kind of compress it all together and then we're going to drop it on there make sure that spring stays on the ledge now you don't need to get it all under tension right yet it's not a very thick ledge so just kind of hold it like this you can pick it up put that pin in the only hole that's left bottom one because now when that pins on there it's also going to ensure that it stays on that ledge on the trigger if you're running into this plastic frame already if you got like six threads showing right now be a little bit more modest than that <laughs> I, i'll tell you it ain't gonna be six threads exposed that's for dang sure if it is i'm really surprised all right so we're just looking down in here you know it doesn't feel like it's fully seated mine doesn't yet well and i also got this little hook in front i need to have that hook under the trigger bar and i can start winding it back i want to have that trigger pushed all the way down into the pocket i want to have that little short leg on the trigger so right now it's not it's laying on the pin so i still got a little work to do here i'm going to push on that trigger i'm going to hold on that bar and my intent is to get that little leg on that trigger my ocd would kill me man i can't do it i can't put this back together like that i'm holding it on there right now okay push that baby straight in there we go get that bar under that little piece of plastic there we go so it's on there and you can kind of feel it now you know and you can look at it nice i mean the main thing is is we want it to be fully pressed into the frame here you don't want your trigger like sticking off or we'll figure it out here in a second it'll be fine self-correcting course here and this is a good time to kind of reassess what's left on the table so we've got safety levers to install just throwing them everywhere we've got the sl hell no with the plastic get that crap out of here aluminum should be easy to tell and then with little tiny like one sixteenth of an inch cone point little tiny set screws we're looking good with the other side let's throw this baby together we're not missing anything we got our trigger we got the spring obviously trigger bar we got our frame support we got the feed ramp we've got the slide stop bar we got the receiver spring hammer springs where it's supposed to be magazine release with the spring all right we're good to go you don't need to do it in the air like this i have to do this because i got to be a good you know movie star you do it the smart way put it on the table line it up you know and use that table to help you but it's not going to show you much if i do it that way so yeah i told you i like to suffer man here we go so what i'm doing is i'm lining up the pins as i'm doing this this is when the little gunsmith shank comes in handy i'm telling you i use these babies all the time so i'm line up the pin down here on the mag release pin down here where the hammer spring locates starting there and i'm working my way all the way up so get that pin that the hammer springs on first because under crap load of tension and it's going to fight you if you make it the last one then i'm looking in here all right at this actual grip pin that the mag release is on got to get that in the hole push that spring down so i'm lining it all up all right at this point i am using the table all right because it's it's kind of nice so you can use your punch to steer that pin perfect get it started in the right direction then check and make sure that pin that that hammer spring is on is still cooperating because she gets upset real easily now the receiver we got to make sure it's going to naturally it's going to try to grab right here so you're going to kind of do this little you're going to push on this kind of just get it in there right you're just going to kind of push it down and get it over and then this is going to see she gets upset she likes to be first this girl right here all right now trigger bar use the table i'm using the table pushing down on the trigger bar as i'm kind of pulling on this clamshell plastic i mean it, yeah it flexes if you didn't believe me before now you definitely do and you're like oh that little support is a good idea see i told everybody you don't need that yeah you do man nice and that's a good sound our two pieces of plastic holding our 30 rounds of 22 magnum are coming together you know push on that trigger bar in case it's sitting on top of that safety just keep an eye on all of that linkage as you're doing this you're not going to be forcing anything right now you don't need a hammer you know so take an extra look there's something in the way it's always always alignment especially Keltec, especially plastic you know frame guns always alignment there's always something 
that's grabbing. So it's like a little puzzle here at the end. I'm checking that hammer, that hammer spring pin. Checking this one. I can see that spring. It needs to get in there. Everything else is starting to look pretty good though. Let's get this little spring in there. That's when this little guy comes in handy too. Either one, they're actually relatively the same thickness. Three thirty seconds inch punch. Make sure you get that you know, grip pin completely lined up. I can feel something still kind of sticking. I'm check inside and see where that leg of the spring is. Okay, good. I can visually see that it's up against the polymer. It's not like trying to punch back through the crack there. You're not gonna use a hammer, but you use your punch to kind of push stuff if you need be. I'm checking this feed ramp now. I'm checking the trigger bar. I'm literally kind of going around. You start hearing that, right? You start hearing that plastic kind of popping together. It's this little guy. What you can do in this scenario, take your two millimeter and you can kind of turn it and get it to start going into the hole as you're kind of pushing. And you, know, you can also push down on, there you go. And that, you know, and that's as much as it's wanting to give right now. Don't get too psyched out right yet, because this can definitely happen, this little gap right here. Just double check every other little hang up point, even up here. And just make sure everything else is nice and snug. And once we start screwing this together, it'll, it'll come together. You only need your longer 185s right now. And we never broke this one free, so we gotta throw some Loctite on these. Get your screws and get your rag ready. All right. Dropping it right in. That bare aluminum grip pin, so you don't wanna strip them. You're gonna need both of those Allen keys. And you're gonna hold one side basically and turn the other. Both of these screws are in, there's still a tiny little gap there. So we're gonna wait, hammer's coming. Here's the safety selector switches, the aluminum texture grip on top and bottom. These are extended, these are improved. The geometry is friggin' awesome. We put a lot of time into this, these tiny little parts. I mean, it does kill me sometimes, cause like, man, how many revisions do we have to do? How many times do we have to look at this? But I know you guys appreciate it, and I definitely appreciate it too. When you get it on your pistol and you're using it, you're like, yep, y'all did good. So we appreciate the compliments, man. We'd like to see that y'all are happy with it. You got these little slots. They're gonna go on that little raised portion. You can see there's like two little tabs there in the center, all right, on that pin that's going through on that you know, little safety cylinder portion. So get them to locate, line up, drop in. They should be in the same position on both sides. They will be, don't worry. We'll double check together. 185 screws. Just doing a little Loctite, still running the two millimeters, taking our little two millimeter screw with the Loctite, dropping it right into that hole that's gonna hold that safety selector in place. Ooh, which side are we on? We're on that right side. Right side is also the side that's got that trigger bar. I wonder what length screw we're gonna need for that one right there. All right, snug, or shoot. See, I told you I'm not gonna use the Wheeler wrench, man. All right, where's my 190? Tiny, short 190, and if you're not sure, grab one of your 185s. You got all the others are 185s. So get some Loctite on your 190, which your 190s are a little shorty, going right into this receiver screw hole, which is the right side, which is the side with the trigger bar, which we need to be good. I gotta, I'm gonna tell myself, all right, don't tighten the crap out of it. I could use my little Wheeler wrench right now, but I mean, if you want to see me use it, this will be for the one dude that's like, I got my wheeler wrench, bro. I want to know who's, if you guys all have these, man, I'll use them. It is super nice. I mean, you know, if you're like, I got every tool but that, then just get it. It's just like any kind of torque wrench, see? It just keeps going and going, but you ain't gonna over tighten it. But you know, some of you guys are good, man. You're like, oh, four pounds? Yeah, that's four. And like, you use that and be like, yeah, that's it, actually four. How'd you do that? We don't want that. What is that piece of? There we go. That looks better. Now we need a 185. So that's all you should have left now. Loctite City. You ain't, you ain't gotta go crazy with it. But 
putting it in the safety selector switch going to lock her down and you know this is when you could use your wheeler that's kind of nice all right now we need one more 185 this is the last of the two millimeter 185s see man i told you i always use too much damn glue and I always tighten the crap out of stuff it's just so i can make a good troubleshooting scenario in the video i'm gonna kind of force myself to use this wheeler actually because these are the receiver screws so i'm trying to avoid having to take it apart again watch the first video if you want to see me take it apart put it back together like six times you know that other video is still out there and i'm, I'm competing with myself right now there we go you know i'm just kind of keeping a little eye on that because hammer time's coming lock nuts are all in place nice all right, so now we're gonna put all six of these socket head cap screws back in. We're gonna start with the biggest one first. Where's the biggest one going? It's going right in the center over that trigger, two and a half millimeter Allen key. Just get them good and snug. You don't have to get them super tight and use a Wheeler fat wrench if you got it, you know, so you don't over tighten them. I know y'all are getting me on the hands, man. I know they're all jacked up. They're always banged up. I always get a couple good hand comments. All right, good. So you can see lock nuts are all in there. We're good. All right, we got all these other screws in. Now, most importantly, we have to check some function here, make sure this, this works. And we're looking, everything looks good and tight. Everything looks like it's in place. We can look at that trigger bar and see how it's moving. It seems to be moving fairly freely. That's a good sign. And that gap closed up a little bit. It's a tiny little gap right there still. Give it a little tap, a little tiny tap, all right, just to see if anything moves. It's one sixteenth inch punch. I'm going right in the center of that little tiny screw. It's plastic, but that's just kind of what you can get with the plastic. So that's kind of the way it is. I wouldn't stress it too much. You know, if you're like me, it's probably bugging you a little bit. Let's go ahead and get the new aluminum slide stop. You don't want to forget that. We got to put some Loctite on there. It's going to go on like this, that ledge towards the top where the slide would be. When we put it on, you're going to see those holes are going to line up with those notches. Those little set screws are going to locate right in there and those little tiny cutouts, which is great. Make sure you got your area clean. I got mine all clean now, finally. All right, so you got a cup, use that cup. You know, these are little tiny, tiny set screws. Even trying to get a hold of one of them is going to be a challenge. Get it on that Allen key that came with it. There it is. We want to get some blue Loctite on there. Like a little drop. Wipe off a little bit. Kind of see it. All right, get it in there. Get it till you can kind of feel it touching that bar. And then we'll tighten them up at the same time. You're going to have to wipe off a little excess that just comes with the territory here you know get it before it dries on there but even if it does it's not the end of the world i mean i'm gonna get it though i'm gonna wipe that off we just want it to stay on and that's a definite requirement all right just get them snug you'll feel it really biting into it which is cool too because it is that little cone point so they're sharp little pointed set screws and you can always use a little clp or any kind of oil to wipe off that excess if you got a lot on there. All right, good to go. Let's do a little test in here to make sure we're good to go. You know, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. And what I should have recommended just now before bolting it all up, I did it in the last video. We just put one in then we tested the function. And then if we had an issue, we went back. But I'm feeling pretty good about this. I, you know, I, we went pretty conservative unless you did something way different we should all be okay so you can use your t-handle or whatever you want to just pull that hammer back get it to the lock in place kind of helps to have something to push it you don't want to let that hammer just slam into the receiver so get something there to hit it something that's not no steel on steel it's kind of a little rubber handle so i'm going to check the operation right now i want to see what it does see if it'll actually drop the hammer yeah all right i'm going to hold it back to the rear like this and i'm going to reset the hammer i'm going to see if i can get it to reset this is just all preliminary right now i mean we can throw the slide on and check it we already bolted everything back up anyway 
Yeah, all right. Just lock that hammer back. It'll make it easier as we put that slide back on. All right, hammer's locked back. Let's put the slide on, just get it all lined up. All right, so make sure the hole's clear. All right, we're gonna locate this pin right here on this side. It's gonna be in line with this natural line here on the frame. So that little tiny pocket is gonna locate right on that recoil spring guide rod. The rest of it's smooth. The way I do it, and it's, it's just easier, you can just literally line it up, drop it right in, and it'll snap right in place once it gets to that recoil spring guide rod, and that's what I'm gonna do. Only time you need to mess with this is when you wanna unlock it. You're gonna turn it to pop it off, and that's it. So it's pretty straightforward and easy. I know I already had a question just on that initial pre-release video. Guy was asking if it was gonna be harder to insert or to remove, and it's a solid pin. I mean, it's nice and snug, and it's gonna be a tight ur fit but it's not anything difficult. I mean, it pushes right in. And you should feel that snap and lock, and it's solid. I mean, positive engagement and everything else. You can even kind of feel it if you're, if you're worried about it. I mean, especially when you first get it in, you want to see, like, you know, how well is it locking. You know, it's, it's good. It's nice and solid. And you can't really easily push it from the other side, which is important. That's your main test, because you could unlock it from here, and then you just do it again. But we're good. That feels rock solid. Awesome. Heavy duty takedown pin with the heavy duty peak performance buffer. So we've got two heavy duty upgrades here to manage all of that recoil and the impact and the heat. It's awesome. All right, we need to test a little function test. Preferably you've got a dummy round or a snap cap or even a round, a casing. You know, pick it up off the ground, you already fired it, good to go. All right, drop in your dummy round or whatever. Not a live round. And we're gonna do a little function check. So. Check the safe. Dude, this feels awesome. Oh, that's so much easier. So check the safety, perfect. All right, pull the trigger. Oh man, that feels nice. You're gonna love this. I'm excited to hear the feedback. I'm keeping it back to the rear. I'm gonna drop this in. And now let's let it forward, feel the reset. Good, all right. You heard that little reset, you could hear it. If you get the reset but you don't hear anything, you're like right on that edge. Yeah, it would suck to have to take it all apart. And it's entirely up to you and your comfort level. But I know for a fact, you know, I can adjust it from here. Just barely, I can get that Allen key in there. Some guys may not want to do that. I mean, you can just barely get in there just to give it a little like quarter turn if you needed to. It shouldn't be much of an adjustment that you would need to make. All right, one second, before we go shoot, let me show you with an empty magazine, the lockup improvement with the enhanced mag release. This is all in the other video too, but uh, you know, this is trying, this is gonna be my better video. I feel like we're gonna, this is gonna be the best. All right, we'll see. Hopefully it's helpful. That's the intent. Really wanted to cover the new stuff. I'm going to just take the slide off so we can see everything. Far less movement, you can see here. Just a little bit, all right? So there's always gonna be some kind of movement. You're never gonna get it to where it's like nothing. Just like when there's pre-travel necessary to make everything function, the hammer reset and all of that, you're gonna have something. Otherwise it would be cutting it too close and then it may not lock. So there is that fine line always. I mean, trust me, OCD is always kicking in. I'm like, oh, let's get it perfect. You don't wanna overdo it. Let's go shoot and see how it runs. Let's run four mags through it. All right guys, finished with the complete all-in-one upgrade bundle on this PMR30. We ran it initially, let's see how it runs now. Let's put more rounds through it. I don't mind shooting more rounds, any excuse I can get. So we're gonna do four magazines, 120 rounds. Let's see how it does. Woo! Love it. It's raining brass in here. <laughs> And some hot brass in the shoe. I love it. I mean, it was running great before. We had some great modifications. Now it's over the top. I love what we've done here. If you guys want anything else, we can do other things. Operator mount, 
metal magazine. We also got improved firing pin, exact edge style extractors. We're looking at some really premium finishes as well. So like a PVD titanium nitride, you know, it would look gold. Things to consider, we're definitely open to it. Obviously there's a point too where maybe it doesn't need any more. But I like this pistol. I like how it's running now. No malfunctions, running so much more improved than it was right out the gate where it was pew, jam. Pew, 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 jam. I'm actually gonna take this back over the tabletop real quick. We can rip it apart so you can see how the buffer looks after 120 rounds. All right, guys, really impressed with how it handled live fire, but I gotta say, I expected nothing less. We put a lot of time into this and a lot of testing. I was really confident it was gonna perform very well. And it did, and I'm happy. I'm happy to see it run like this. I like the transformation effect, you know, where it goes from running all right out of the box to running really good. This is the little after shoot here, because I want to know, I want to see it, and I figured why not. So here you go. This is the crown jewel of what we're offering in this new buffer, which is exciting. Man, that is cool. <laughs> it held up like a rock. Solid. There's no indentation, nothing but like a little tiny line where you can see like something hit it, but it's certainly held up and holding up and no melting, but 120 rounds straight and that barrel is just smoking hot. So really happy, excited. I can't wait to hear what you guys think about it all. That's what gets us motivated. And let us know what else you'd like to see for the PMR 30. And if there's enough consensus on it, we'll definitely make it. Thank you, Car Brother, for all your ideas and your support. Really appreciate it. Keep them coming. Let's keep making more stuff. I'm glad all this COVID stuff is over with. Get back to making more parts for guns. As always, happy shooting.